Hello YouTube, welcome back. Here's a lovely view of the Northern Rivers from a lookout on the Coolamon Scenic Drive. Over to the right is um, Byron Bay and the Byron Lighthouse. And right now we're looking over some nice farmland on the ocean side of the ranges, including a macadamia farm right down the middle. So it's a beautiful sunny day and it's gonna be hot. So let's get on with it. So here we are back on Nutkin Farm and the inspiration for this video came from a commenter uh, a few episodes ago who asked the question um, almost randomly, what's the ideal row spacing for macadamias? And um, it's a topic I've addressed sort of indirectly in a few videos but never really done anything specifically on the topic, mainly because there was a really good video about this in the Australian Macadamia channel, but um, since it disappeared, there isn't really much on the subject. So um, here's a video I didn't think I'd be doing. Now, um, they often say when you gather 10 lawyers in a room and ask them a question, you get 10 different answers. That's actually never been true. Actually, if you get 10 different lawyers in a room, you'll probably have them gravitating around one or two answers. Macadamia farmers, however, you get 10 of them in a room, you might well get 10 different answers and the answer will usually be the best thing to do is what I do on my farm. And I'm not labeling as a bunch of egotists, but if something works for us, we tend to sort of part of human nature, think it'll work for other people as well. And macadamia row spacing's really been one of those sort of issues and it's evolved over the years too. Um, so I, I sound like I'm beating around the bush in not giving a direct answer to the question what's the ideal macadamia row spacing? But there's reasons why it can vary depending on um, individual circumstances. Now in the early days, um, well, we describe macadamia row spacing firstly by row width, that is the difference between these rows of trees and the, the spacing within the row. So, um, a typical spacing, for example, might be seven metres by four metres. Um, so seven in the row and then four between the trees. And um, I can give you a bit of an example of seven by four in this particular block here. This is um, block two, um, although um, Nutkin Farm was planted very much on a contour. So I don't really have so many straight rows as wiggly rows that conform to the sort of the contours. And um, one agronomist said that that's a good thing and I certainly don't mind. A bit of extra effort to turn the steering wheel as you go along a row, but you know, big hairy deal. Anyway, so row spacing is usually talked about in that way. And it's still an interest in macadamia farmers because in the Australian Macadamia Farm Society Journal, every time they do a special on someone's farm, they always tell you what the varieties are, what the row spacing is, and what the soil is. These are the variables that farmers still look at very closely. So, good question from the subscriber. Um, in the early days, when we were just starting out, and we're talking about the 1970s where people were experimenting a bit, um, there was a fair bit of conservatism and they did some wide spacing of trees, thinking give them a fair bit of room. Um, we then moved to the 1980s when people started getting their crops in, thinking, wow, look, more trees means more nuts. Let's put in as many as we possibly can. And, yeah, we then moved, uh, you know, in the early 2000s to a slightly more relaxed regime because, you know, at that stage, the trees that had been planted in the early years were starting to grow very closely together and block out the sunlight for each other, which is exactly what you're looking at now. And they reached the realisation when yield started falling that that wasn't a good thing because you were no longer getting nuts on the sides of the trees. You were only just getting them at the top. And so we sort of widened out a little bit more. And in recent years, well, there've been some more sort of new developments. So um, let's get on now with what the experts have said over time. Uh, I've looked up some old literature and um, in the early 2000s, there were some really good guides issued by both the Queensland and New South Wales Departments of Agriculture. 
um, called the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries and the Queensland Departure of Agriculture and Fisheries. They each released a guide and the Queensland one was the most extensive. It basically said, look, your row spacing for trees depends on the variety that you plant. And also if you've got sloping ground, you allow a little bit extra in the row width just to encourage some more grass to grow in the inter-row and then that helps get uh, erosion under control. And that was pretty good advice. But it did give its advice via variety. So the thin upright varieties like the A38, um, the A16, and it even said the 741 and the and the um, uh, and the three and the three double four. It said that those could be planted at seven by four because these were upright trees that tended to be narrower than the really big old trees like the two four six. Now, that advice um, you shouldn't take any more. Uh, at least. Don't take that advice as far as the 344s are concerned because these 344s here, yes, they're upright trees, but they're also very big trees. And I think what the Queensland um, Department advice really failed to appreciate was just how big trees like the 344 and the 741 can get. Right? You will run into problems at 7x4, even with an upright variety. Now, a38 stays fairly narrow. Uh, I mean, you would eventually possibly run into problems. Um, A16 can be a dwarfing tree, but I've also seen some very old, large examples of that. And so the more modern guides put out uh, by um, the New South Wales DPI in particular now discredit 7x4 and say, look, you know, we realised over time it was just too tight a spacing. Now, at the end of the day, you are farming sunlight and you know the, the access to sunlight can be shared by lots of trees uh, or it can be fought over by lots of trees or it can be shared by a fewer number of trees and what they're discovering of course is that trees that get full access to sunlight will bear much more and cost you less because you're feeding fewer trees than um, and spraying fewer trees than if you crowd it all in so that you know planting more trees just doesn't mean more nut the way they were thinking about it in the 1980s. So here as I said it's, it's sort of an example of seven by four. Um, you see some grass around here which I'm going to come through and clean out before harvest happens obviously but uh, that's mainly because random trees have been removed in order to let sunlight in. Without those removals there just wouldn't be grass here there'd be more sort of stuff like this you would end up with erosion from where the trees are and you get root exposure like you see here so that kind of row spacing if you don't keep the tree height under control will lead to poorer yield poorer tree health definitely loss of soil and you know you've you've you might do okay in the short term but in the longer run you're wrecking your asset which is the really the soil and you're not sharing the real resource, sunlight, properly in order to maximise your crop. So that's seven by four. Now here I am in block one, um, saying a quick hello to my tree called Stupid. Uh, this year there's no out of season flowering, just some nice nuts that look like they're getting ready to be harvested. But block one was planted in about 2006 and by that stage the trend was moving towards eight by four as the spacing between rows. Now these trees should be bigger than they are but they were neglected for many years and, and I'm just bringing them into their sort of youthful honeymoon period since taking over the farm. You can see that there's still plenty of space between the rows, plenty of room for, for ground cover uh, this particular grass is only 10 days old, so I'll be, but I'll be coming around and chopping it again. But 8x4 is sort of one of those sweet spots where any tree you plant, even the larger ones, won't need pruning for many years. Um, it'll have enough leeway so that you can keep the rows uh, nice and healthy and still get sun up and down the sides of the tree. And you still get crops, of course, up and down the sides of the tree. And that's, um, that's what you want. So eight by four became the norm, um, you know, and it's still pretty much the most popular spacing there is in terms of what people um, 
choose to do. When I planted my trial plot of um, the MCT1 macadamia variety, I was told it was a smaller tree as an adult. And, you know, while bushy, doesn't get overly tall. And so I thought in this particular case, eight by four would be the right spacing for a group of MCT1s. Now it's not a whole block or anything. Like I said, it's a trial plot, but I'm definitely keeping the trees. It's not some sort of try it and rip it up. And um, the nuts coming on this MCT1 over here are particularly happy. Now, what you can immediately see from a young block like this, particularly as it starts to bear nuts, is that there's a lot of so-called wasted sunlight. I mean, there's all this ground cover in the middle. It takes lots of mowing, costs lots of money. Um, and, you know, it doesn't, doesn't return a crop for you because there's still plenty, you know. Even with double this number of trees, they'd still have all the sunlight they need to produce a crop. And so in the last 10 years, some farmers actually started planting very close spacings, um, five and six metres apart with trees like this. Now, they were doing some economics numbers and thinking, well, in the early years of the tree, we can get lots of crop. And then as the trees get too big, we'll just pull out the rows in the middle and instead of, you know, five metre spacing, you'll end up with 10 metre spacing and, um, and you'll have made some money in the meantime. That idea has largely been discredited because the numbers don't really add up. I suppose if the macadamia price was extraordinarily high and you knew, and you knew it was gonna stay high for the next few years, it might be worth the gamble and then pull up the middle trees later. But it's an idea that is, is now largely discredited. And so people are now planting trees pretty much in the way they plan to finish with them. And I suppose, you know, it depends on some personal choices there as well. How long do you plan to be a macadamia farmer? Um, are you gonna do it for your retirement? In which case a closer planting might be more suitable to you, although it might affect the resale value if you then sell the farm with overcrowded trees. So perhaps an eye to the long-term is a good idea whether you're going to be here long-term or not. But what does the government, what does the DPI now say about row spacing and what you should look at? Well, um, our latest is from the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries in 2022, and they put out a good guideline, which is publicly available, on establishing new orchards. They're now saying that eight by four should really be your minimum spacing. And that's, um, you know, something that you could obviously get away with for smaller varieties or for shorter periods of time. But that's one end of the scale. And the other end of the scale is nine metre spacing and a variable tree width. So they said you can plant anywhere between three and a half and five metres apart. So there's your range, eight by four to nine by five. And that's for the varieties that are now being planted um, and this particular block I've got um, which is a block it's not a trial plot but it'll it'll get to a block eventually this one is my macadamia R block um, a lot of the trees have been mangled by cows so don't pay too much attention to them they're actually quite happy the ones that survived but this is nine by four so the idea of a spacing like this is that really you can have fairly big trees over time and you won't need to prune them. Um, the golden, golden um, rule as far as sun access is concerned is that the tree shouldn't be any taller than the width of the row. And that way you'll get some, some light in between. It's not a hard and fast rule because it kind of does depend which side of the hill your, um, your crop faces. Uh, you get more exposure if the hill slopes north, for example, than if it slopes south. And um, I just chose nine by four here because I thought, look, these are going to be hopefully very productive trees. Um, pruning does hit production a bit for a couple of years. If you could manage the tree height, that would be that would be the best way of doing it. And look, I don't, I don't, you know, claim that I'm going to live forever, but I'd like these to be productive for a good long time, and I'd like pruning not to be one of my hassles.
So that's the choice I made. Now, if you're planting the bigger, older varieties, and there's still people planting the 344 and the 246, uh, I saw a video presentation by Robbie Commons from the AMS, who um, he's picked nine by four as well, but he's planting those big old varieties down in the um, down in the old sugarcane flats. Yeah, I would have thought nine by four, absolutely, you wouldn't want to go less than that for these big trees that everyone used to plant. But if you're viewing this video a long, long time from 2024, which is when I'm making it, um, you'll want to check the most current available information because there's some new developments on rootstocks that's actually pretty interesting. You um, know from citrus, and you, you know, if you go to any reasonable nursery, and I'm probably not Bunnings, but nurseries that do citrus are now selling things like what they call dwarf eureka trees or dwarf lemon trees. Now, they're the same eureka variety that we all sort of grow in our backyard. But what's happened is they've changed the rootstock variety to something that's proven to produce a smaller tree. And it's still a vigorous tree, it still bears lots of fruit, but the way the rootstock sends nutrients up the tree and signals up the tree, it can influence the tree height in a major way. So that what you end up with is the same variety of plant on effectively a dwarfing variety. And they're trialing this with some macadamias now, and I'm really interested to see those results. Because if you can create a tree that doesn't grow all that high, we can start looking at closer row spacings again. And, you know, obviously increasing production from nice bushy trees that bear fruit all over. And um, that's a real uh, potential boon for macadamia farmers who are gonna be planting these things in the future. What time frame are we looking at? Well, you know, don't expect anything until the late 2020s, but um, small dwarfing rootstocks may be the way of the future. Um, the citrus industry is a bit ahead of us here, but let's see what they can do with macadamia nuts. In the meantime, on what's currently known in 2024, um, I would probably stick with nine by four unless I was growing a particularly small kind of tree. And the trees I'd think of if I was doing eight by four would be perhaps this MCT1, like the one you see here. Um, Macadamia variety P is also small and um, Macadamia A447, one of the new varieties from Hidden Valley. It was the smallest tree in all of the recent regional variety trials in you know in the in the last five years and yet it was a heavy cropper so even without a dwarfing rootstock it was still pretty much a dwarfing tree that bore heavily that sort of tree you could do eight by four and you'd probably never live to regret it um, anything bigger than that particularly if you're planting some of the older hawaiian varieties it's time to sort of look at moving out and giving some more space to these babies because they need it and they'll reward you for it. So what about the largest row spacing, 10 by five? Well, that was done very early in the macadamia industry here in the Northern Rivers. And in order to show you that, I've brought you back to Park Properties. And um, long-term subscribers will know that that's the um, set of properties uh, built by Kerry Packer for his senior executives at Channel 9. Uh, back in back in the, the mid to late 70s and that's when uh, Bruce Chester started getting involved and uh, Bruce has just turned 70 now and um, happy birthday Bruce um, all I can say is bringing a gelato truck um, to your birthday that's how to party um, the trees here have just turned about 50 odd years old um, so a bit younger than Bruce but if you look at them they're big overgrown monster trees, probably variety 246. But this is a good example of 10 by five planting, which is what the was advised back in the early days of the industry. Now, you can almost see why, because even though these trees are massively overgrown, like these are big monster trees, and you can't see much light in between the rows, still, there was a lot of space between these trees. And I mean, you can't let a tree go 50 years, no matter how you grow it, but, uh, and, and these trees do need some maintenance, um, both height and width. 
but there was a very big generous space for these trees to grow and crop for many many years before this would have been needed and you know as you walk along the rows here I mean there's a couple of rows where you can still see grass in the inter row despite the fact that really nothing's been done to these trees for many years so the 10 by 5 planting was I suppose you know it wasn't possibly done with 50 years of farming in mind but it was certainly done to give the trees a lot of space to crop up and down the tree uh, and produce without incurring the costs of pruning and other maintenance um, and even with pruning it's something where you could tolerate a fairly large size of tree. Now obviously if you buy someone else's macadamia farm choices about row spacing are basically taken out of your hands you're stuck with what the original planter of the farm put in or are you um, there are some ways of changing your row spacing obviously you can't just pull up trees and put them down somewhere else uh, even if the tree would survive that process it would be extremely expensive but there are some farms that were planted on too close a spacing in the early days where efforts are being made to give them more space and regenerate growth and crop along the side of the tree as well as just up on the top. Now I've shown this farm before it's on um, Eureka it's on Federal Drive sorry um, near Federal this was a very closed in farm now the spacing between the trees was probably no more than three meters um, but the row spacing was very very tight and when I first looked at this farm there was no grass there was no side growth on the trees it, it almost looked like a ghostly interior and yet have a look at it now every second row has been removed and it, it still looks like an overly wide row spacing but that's really because these great big trees haven't grown in to use the available space in fact now I look at it I almost think maybe more than one row was removed in between the middle of the ones that now stand but uh, the trees themselves um, even in the space of I think it's about just over a year since this was done the trees are recovering there's growth on the sides and they look really now a lot happier than the way they've ever looked you can see some green flush growth on this particular tree that's a sign that the tree is, is happy and putting on growth where it never used to get light before. So you can amend your row spacing that way um, and, and go from what might have been sort of 7 by 3 to something like 14 by 3, doubling the row spacings. And over time, you know, it, it, it won't get shadowed again. I think 14 is really more than what you'd ever use planting a, a farm from scratch but for big old trees if you're not going to cut them down to the to the height of the row which is you know what lets in most of the sun if you're not going to chop them down it's probably a, the best way to deal with them but other than doubling your row spacing or pulling up all your trees and replanting them again is there another way to change your row widths well yes there is and it's thinking outside the box a little bit but this farm here on Gorman's Road Eureka has done exactly that what you can see here is an original row of old trees almost certainly planted in the 1980s along with the rest of the farms in Eureka but and there's another old row two ones down but in between it there is a row of newly planted trees these look to be about four maybe five years old and there's grass in the inter row it looks like there's a bit of a drainage channel as well and the trees in the middle are looking fantastic what's happened here is that these three rows of trees you see used to be four what the farmer did was remove two middle rows of trees and replace them with one new middle row planted in between where the other rows were and that takes the spacing one from what was almost certainly seven by four to ten and a half 
by four um, because you've you basically deleted two rows and added a new one. Now, the advantages of that, of course, is that you're, you're renewing your orchard, you're putting in new trees, they're sheltered. They won't get full sun, so they may sort of grow a bit taller, a bit more quickly, and these ones do seem to be searching for the sun a little, but they're getting some. Um, it's only about nine o'clock in the morning here and they're already getting some sun. So on this row spacing, 10 and a half by four, you've got some new trees. You're combining it with some older trees, which you are doing some renewal on. You can see that the older trees are getting sunlight as well. And combine those and you've got a very good long-term management plan because over time, you can do more rows like that. You don't have to do them a whole block at a time. Um, this farmer seems to have done some rows, but you know perhaps some more are coming in the future. Eventually, you can replace all your trees and end up with effectively 10 and a half metre spacing for all your rows. And, um, and then, you know, rather than suffer the income loss of a complete replant, you progressively replant while keeping the older trees productive, in fact, improving their production. Now, I mean, obviously there's a budget to that, you know, removing two rows of trees uh, and planting one does give you a hit to your crop. Um, also gives you a lot of wood chip to put around existing trees if you've got erosion and all these sorts of other problems that can be caused from having the overcrowded rows in the first place. So, you know, it, it really is, I guess, using one problem and, and um, turning it into a solution for you. Um, this particular farm I've looked at a couple of times now enviously. It's something that potentially I'd like to do. Um, but you know, there's toss ups, you know, there's, there's the heavy pruning method where you try and bring the trees back to sort of seven meters high so that they're no longer higher than the, the, the row width. Um, but it's a fairly big chop to trees like this. They'd, they'd survive it, but you know, there's certainly a lot of doubt as to whether or not they would crop heavily again if you just chopped them off that heavily. Um, so there it is guys there's the row spacing question and um, while I can't give you a definitive answer if I was planting a macadamia orchard today um, what would I do um, well look I would probably follow what I'm doing in my newest block block 8 where I'm planting my macadamia R's and do 9 by 4 um, I know others like Maddie Kelby is doing eight by four and, and look, there's certainly, um, certainly some arguments for eight by four in the modern tree environment where you're not growing huge trees um, compared to these you know, 1980s giants that, um, that we're all used to in the Northern Rivers area. But um, what would you pick guys? If you had a choice, would you um, try and do a wider spacing? For your longer term or you think shorter term in terms of higher income generation and then worry about the spacing later food for thought food for conversation talk to you again soon bye